concrete walls There's a place for us Where we could go, where we could be alone Between city lights, we don't have to hide I wanna go, do you wanna follow? There's something in the air, I can't explain it but it's there Ain't nobody gonna find us in our secret love affair I don't wanna have to hide no more, it shouldn't be I wanna go and I wanna know Do you wanna follow? Happy Easter, you guys. Happy Easter, you guys. Everybody got their Easter candy on? <laughs> What's up, everybody? Happy Sunday afternoon. Uh, it's 1 p.m. Uh, where I am. But uh, this is the European stream, so uh, happy evening to Europeans. I hope everybody out there who's celebrating Easter today, or Passover, or <clears throat> I assume it's Passover. Someone in the comments said happy Passover. Uh, it's pretty risky to wish people uh, a happy holiday because uh, you know, some people are going to get offended that you left them out. Some people are going to get offended that you mentioned them. So just, well, you know, whatever you're doing today, happy. I hope you're happy. <clears throat> it is pretty safe to wish most I, I think it's fair to say it's safe to wish most people around the world a happy Easter because Easter is very widely celebrated at least in the in, in many many parts of the world yeah I'm not rolling the 
I'm not rolling the chair, the Eveling. You're right. There's a. I gotta. I can't move my chair now. I can't. I can't. I can't do it. Yeah, depressed people are offended at being told to be happy. What if I don't want to be happy? What if I'm medically incapable of being happy? Why would you assume? So I guess what I'm saying is, hello. And uh, whatever it is that you are hoping to get out for today, I hope you get it. What if I don't have any hopes? Oh, all right. Well, sorry. <laughs> um, despite what my opening might have, uh, despite what my opening might suggest, this is a Q and A live stream. As much as I try to be enter entertaining. I don't want to rely on that. I feel like I would let myself down. As much as I would like to be good looking. Enough said. So we're going to go for information. We're going to go for information here. q and A. I'm going to be answering your questions. Jacob Zirjal. I am reading comments. Everybody wants to test. Everybody wants to test streamers to see if they're like, is this really live? No, I recorded this last night. I sat here for two hours, and I recorded it last night, and now I'm just playing it back as a DVR. Because it took me just as long to record it. I still had to sit there for two hours and talk. But I did... Yeah, no. It's live. It's live. Phantom FPV is here. Luminary on the channel. It is cold and raining today, at least where I am. Thomas Arndt, you see, this is how it works, guys. This is how it works, in case you're new here. And if you're new here, welcome. I'm so glad to have you. This is what I got up on my main screen. I got your questions right here. I got your super chats right here. And, oh, let me get here in the live stream chat. What up, patrons? I got, my, oh, wow, that's a hell of a, that's a great gif. What the, <laughs> that's a fantastic gif. Thank you for that. I got my patrons over here on my Discord server. Hello, patrons. Hello, everybody. Uh, and I'm going to answer your questions just like this. Thomas Arndt says, in February 2019, you made a build video, JB's Perfect Freestyle Quadcopter, where you built a quad with the parts you wanted. Any plans for an updated 2020 build? Yes. It's all coming together, Thomas, because, like, I, I, like I've thought for a long time that I should update that build, but I haven't been, like, inspired. But I, it's all coming together. For example, this... What's this? This is a prototype of my new F7 flight controller that will be coming out soon. You can see it's a prototype. I'm not going to refocus my camera, but it's got handwritten in Sharpie. This is prototype number three. Um, that is the final prototype. If these guys get the green light, then production will start and it may be for sale in... I'm, I'm not going to give a date because I don't want to disappoint... But we're going to build it, we're going to test it, we're going to pull the trigger, they're going to start making it, and then it's going to have to come from China. So, like, maybe it could be, like, it theoretically could be as little as a month, probably more like six or eight weeks, given especially how shipping is lately. But, um, yes, fear for fun, there will be a matching ESC to go with it. So, like, this... Yeah, now I got something to, I got a flight controller for my build, but wait, there's more. The um, Runcam Eagle, my, my Runcam Eagle, uh, which is my favorite camera for the longest time. There's a JB Signature Eagle camera. The Eagle has been discontinued. If you love the Eagle and you can find it in stock, stock up because they're not making any more. Sorry. But I am working with Runcam. I don't have it here to show you. I'm working with Runcam on another camera that I'm going to be... It is a camera that's already out, like the Eagle, that I've tweaked. Because, like, there are these cameras that have a pretty good sensor, but then I just don't like the default settings. I think I could do better. I don't know. So we're going to be doing that soon. That's coming soon. And I got motors, obviously. And, uh, yeah, so new JB Freestyle Signature Build is coming soon. The real question is... What frame am I going to use? Now, in the previous build, I used the Armitan uh, Chameleon or Marmot. But ever since I've been thinking 
I've been thinking that freestyle frames are too freaking heavy. Like, and and the the place where I knew I'd gone too far was my build of the Catalyst Machine Works Bang God. And I don't want to put down the Bang God frame. This was my build. The decision, the Bang God is a little bit of a heavy frame, but this was like an 800 gram quadcopter with a GoPro and a battery. So 800 grams. That's not, that's not the Bang God's fault. But that was the build where I thought, I got to start thinking about weight on freestyle builds. Instead of just kind of being like, nah, who cares? It's all good. Um, because like uh, this this quadcopter that Phantom FPV sent me, it just puts it into sharp relief. That is an extremely powerful quadcopter, but it's also a light quadcopter. Every time I fly, one of Evan Turner's, one of... Uh, uh, who else? Who was I? I had another person in mind. Oh, Vanover. Every time I fly a, like a top racing quad, I'm like, this thing flies so good. So good. And I'm like, why don't my freestyle quads fly like this? Well, I think it's the weight. So I'm going to try to find with this freestyle build a, a, a compromise between weight. I'm going to try and get the weight down to something a little more reasonable. So... But the frame, still thinking about the frame. Squishy7 says, obviously the kebab glide is the one you want to pick. Mike Berkman suggests I check out the bando killer. Let's look at some of these frames. As long as we're talking about this, let's look at some of these frames. Hold on a second here. I got a whole bunch of windows up that I don't need to have up for this live stream. Close windows. Uh, do, 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 do. Okay. The bando killer. Who makes the bando killer? Alep FPV suggests a Kiss Apex. Uh, that's uh, Apex is a good frame. Don't get me wrong. It's a pretty expensive frame, though. It's really expensive. Um, granted, the uh, granted the Chameleon is also an expensive frame, but it does come with a lifetime warranty. There's the Bando Killer. This is Lethal Conception Bando Killer. Let's have a look at it. Interesting. Oh, I, <clears throat> I apologize. As soon as I started streaming, my nose got snuffly. Hang on one second. Okay, I muted so you guys didn't have to hear that. <laughs> Bando killer. Lethal conception Bando killer. So let's see. Well, how can we characterize this frame? Swappable arms. Vertical front cage. Interesting. Interesting. How does the front cage join up with the... Why can't I make this picture bigger? That's a shame. How does the front cage join up with the body? Because that's always a weak spot on this style of frame, and the exact way it's done can make or break it. Oh, I'd love to get a, that's interesting. What's the weight though? Cause that's what I'm thinking about in this, in this particular scenario. What's the weight? Hundred twenty five grams. That's not bad. I feel like for a freestyle frame, around 130, 140 grams is getting pretty heavy. 125 grams, 120, 110 grams is getting light, and getting down into the 100, 115, 110 grams is where you, it's. Mm, that's where it's starting to get good. Um, yeah. Let's see what else. What else? Rotorite CL1. I mean, that's not a bad frame. I doubt I'm gonna like pick that as my like i mean it isn't a heavy frame it's true i i probably would like to try to pick something with a little more character not to take anything away from the cl1 but like when i pick my my perfect ultimate freestyle build functionality isn't like the only thing that goes into the choice especially with a frame like i feel like the flight controller there's no like self-expression in what flight controller you choose nobody's going to be like oh that is a good looking flight controller what do you got there but with the frame, a style comes into it some, and the the CL1 is pretty, I mean, it's designed to be pretty basic, so nothing against it, but the tax goal, tax goal is a little heavy too. 
Yeah. Nukes says those R men's are just begging to be clipped off. Well, I think that's kind of the point. The spiky R men's are designed to protect the motor, right? Isn't that what they're for? Anyway. Is OneDrive turned on? OneDrive is not running. Nothing is updating, uploading right now. So I hope the stream is good, dudes. I hope it's good. Let's see here. Stream is healthy. Analytics, 480 concurrent viewers. Let's see here. Now here's uh, here's one that I think, uh, let's look at the other one that uh, was suggested by, who suggested it? Well, anyway. This one is the, uh, this is Kebab's website. Bob Rugi is his name. Kebab FPV is what he goes by. And he is a frame designer. There we go. Let's check this one out. I've had my eye on this one. This is the Glide 5 inch. Now, this is interesting. I'm intrigued by this frame. This is a very simple frame, but I feel like it has style. You know, like, although it's just they, some people call this the school bus design of frames because it's just like a big, wide school bus that you stick your stuff into. Bob Ruge is a very, very talented frame designer and pilot and has a real skill for sort of paring things down. Phantom FPV says that's going to break. Well, look, I mean, you're going to make trade offs like let's go the other direction. Um I believe, here's the frame, yeah. So this is the BQE Bandolero. This is Jeff Orta's frame. This is a Bando Slayer Extraordinaire. If you would, like, I don't know why Drew Drew didn't build a frame more like this because he also comes from Detroit and slays Bandos. But this thing has five millimeter arms, four millimeter, I don't know this, but I'm not, I'm just rattling these off. You can, it is a big, heavy, honking, you will not break it. I mean, eventually you'll break something, but. Like everything breaks eventually. How much does it weigh? It doesn't. Does it not say? What's the weight on the Bandolero? Anybody know? I mean, I'm gonna guess it's 140 grams, maybe. It's it's like really, it's up there. Um, so if you want to save weight, you got to give something up. And the thing is, is it gonna break? I mean, something's gonna break eventually, but. How breakable is it versus how good does it fly? If we were to go all the way down to like an 80 gram race frame, well, number one, we would have to work really hard to fit all our gear inside it. Like, let's look at uh, the um, let's look at um, the chief. Let's look at the chief frame by Alex Campbell. This is a racing frame. Now you could find a way to stick a GoPro on top of this and make this your freestyle frame. But and it's going to be a huge pain in the ass to build. So, like, I don't know if I want to go that far. But, um, yeah. 65 gram Mode 2 Ghost. Now you're really talking. But, like, we say, well, if I'm going to go from a 140 gram frame down to a 110 gram frame, well, it's only 30 grams. Well, 30 grams adds up. But if you go from a freaking 100 and 40 gram frame down to like a 80 gram or a 65 gram race frame. I don't know. There's a trade off. There's always a trade off. So, um, that's the direction I'm thinking. I'm thinking I'm going to try to, I'm going to stop building quite so much for durability and try and build a little more towards handling and lightweight. The thing is, and then if they all, and then if it shatters on the first crash and I'm like, this is stupid. Then I'll know I made the wrong decision, but I won't know until I try. D lightweight frames just fly so damn good. You guys don't know. I mean, maybe you do know. If you haven't flown like a 400 gram racer, it's so good. And I think every time I do it, I think to myself, this, this frame is tuned so well. And then I'm like, maybe it's that it's 200 grams lighter than mine. All right, Demon RC Flow. Let's let's look at a couple others. Demon RC Flow. 
Let's see. Not too expensive. Can I please have a big picture? Oh, any minute now. Interesting. 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 A little narrower than the glide. Interesting. TBS Source 1 for durability asks Copter 612. TBS Source 1 is, uh, yeah, if you're going for durability, should you also be considering repair cost? You're not wrong. You can get Source 1 compatible parts almost anywhere, and they're really inexpensive. Not bad. Why does everybody think they need to add the weight of the GoPro? Asks Cool Hand Druid. I mean, I hear you, dude. Um, like, a, if you just want to freestyle, you don't necessarily need the GoPro. But the thing is, even if you're not trying to make awesome YouTube content, which, which for the f I am, so obviously I have to add the GoPro. But even if you're not trying to make awesome YouTube content, analyzing the GoPro footage can tell you a lot about your flying. If you only ever look at DVR or if you never review your footage, even worse, you're missing out. You are a worse pilot than you would be. I can't tell you how many times when I'm editing a freestyle edit, I see something in the GoPro footage that I go, oh, I didn't know I was doing that. Or there's a tuning thing and I'm like, oh, I need to fix that. And you don't see it in the, in the, uh, in the goggles because while you're flying, you're just too focused on flying. And you don't see it in the in the DVR because it's standard definition. So, so there is a reason to run a GoPro, even if you're not trying to be a YouTube rock star. Speaking of GoPros, I got my first GoPro Eight. I got it because I'm doing a review of this, the Insta Three Sixty, and I thought. I mean, you got to compare it against, like, the latest and greatest. So, got my first... I'm scared to run this on my quad. Like, it doesn't have a replaceable lens. Like, here's a 7. Look at my 7. If this was my 8, I would be crying right now. But look at the 7. You can just, whoop, comes right off. I got some camera butter on here. This is a stick-on ND filter. You could just change it out. I'm, I, I'm never, I'm going to keep buying sevens as long as I can. The seven is so much better for FPV than the eight. Just swap out your lens protector. Built in. Oh, yeah, you can just take it to Best Buy and get a new one. It's true, but at the same time, maybe not. Uh-oh. The stream is acting up. Why? Why is the stream acting up? No, I agree. The stream is acting up. I am going to review the Insta. Um, why is the bitrate acting up? Hang on one second. Hang on one second, guys. YouTube agrees that the bitrate is messed up. Sit tight, guys. Yeah. Uh, I don't know what it could be. <sighs> no. I don't want to restart my laptop. My laptop's offline. I have no idea, guys. Uh, yeah. YouTube also agrees that my bitrate is screwed. Um, yeah. 
Let me reload this window. Um, I kind of don't want to stop and restart the stream. Yeah, okay, good. Uh, people are saying it's coming back. I kind of don't want to risk stopping and restarting the stream. <laughs> okay. But no, it's nothing on my end, I don't think. Uh, no, no OneDrive. I asked my family if they were uploading anything. All right, I think we're back. Hello, welcome back. So I will be reviewing the Insta360 One X. It's really, this really impressing me, actually. I, I, I wasn't expecting to be, because there's, there's the thing. Every time I test a camera that isn't a GoPro, I end up thinking, it's pretty good. It's not a, it's not a GoPro, but it's pretty good. This thing is pretty slick, though. I, I'm, I'm more and more impressed with it. So, yeah. Somebody asked, should I be buying Hero 7s? Are they going away? I mean, if you look at it, you can still buy Sessions a long way after they were discontinued. So, I mean, I think the 7 is going to be available for a while if that's what you want to stick to. I don't know. How much does it cost? Uh, the 8? The 8 is like 400 bucks. Why would you rather have a 7 above the 8 for FPV, Mark? Well... The thing is, the 8 is a great camera. It's it's a little heavier. It's about 15 grams heavier than the 7, and the 7 is already not light. It's heavier because it's got this base built in with these fold-out flippy things, but we're not going to be using this. Um, and it has a built-in lens. It has a built-in lens. I have two streams going. No, I don't have two streams going. That's not true. Uh, that is definitely not true. Hang on. Anyway, I'm only streaming once. Yeah, no, 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 I don't have two streams going. Um, the thing about the 8 is it's got a built-in lens. And when the lens is scratched, you're done. You're done. Uh, whereas on the 7, the lens is removable and replaceable, which means that it's way easier to install and remove ND filters. And if you break the lens or scratch the lens, you just replace it for 15 bucks. It's no problem. Um, so to me, the eight is a move in the wrong direction for FPV, but, um, and, and you say, well, what about hyper smooth boost? Hyper smooth boost is amazing. It was, it's amazing, but you can't use hyper smooth boost when you're doing super view as near as I can tell. Every time I turn on super view boost is not available anymore. Hey, eternal maver. I know that's not technically the lens, but they call it the lens. That's what they call it. I don't know. So um, Hypersmooth Boost, I was so excited about it to get kind of real steady, but uh, like flights. But I always use Superview for freestyle. So if you wanted to do a cinematic flight with wide aspect ratio, then you could use Boost. But um, for, for the kind of flying I do, where I want to be using Superview, Boost is not available. I guess, I guess the thing is, I mean, I just wanted to try Hypersmooth Boost out. So if I was going to do like a Cinewhoop flight with Hypersmooth Boost, wide aspect ratio would probably be what I'd want. So maybe that's not as big a deal. Anyway. <clears throat> I don't know why the feed is jumpy, guys. The internet is, uh, is a little screwy. Uh, I don't think it's my end. I don't think it's my end. No, DH for life, there is no second stream running. Well, the way that YouTube works is all of these live streams have the same stream key. So when I start streaming, every single upcoming live stream shows waiting. But it doesn't actually start until I hit the start button on the one I'm actually streaming. So the fact that my April 13th live stream shows waiting, it's doesn't it's not I'm I only have one stream. It's, it's just YouTube is, is going like, which of these streams do you want to run? Again, oh no, again, it's, it's, I don't know what to do. I know, that's April 6th live stream is waiting. It's not April 6th anyway, it's April 13th. Anyway, no second stream. All right, let's get back, uh, let's get back on topic. Let's say, people are saying the voice is fine, so let's, uh, yeah. Let's just do it. Let me read some uh, super chats. How about that? Can I reduce my video quality? Um, I could do that. Hang on. How do I? I could try doing that. Hang on. Edit. 
Sorry, guys. Uh, is it under settings? Under OBS stream settings, output settings, streaming. How do I change the output? Rescale output. I can't change any of these settings while I'm streaming. I'm sorry, guys. We're just gonna uh, we're just gonna put we're just gonna push through. <clears throat> bite frost. Bite frost is not dead, Nux. Uh, Fat Shark says bite frost is not dead. I saw a couple people asking about uh, bite frost. Um, Fat Shark says something new is coming from bite frost, and this is not. Fat Shark made a post about this on RC groups. They said that bite frost is coming it will fit inside your hdo goggles and still have room for a rapid fire so presumably that means that i mean read between the lines that means that fat shark has a module that fits in the head tracker bay for bite frost so that's exciting so we'll see about that people are asking who won the giveaway i haven't done the drawing for the andy stop andy I haven't done the drawing for the giveaway yet. I will uh, I will announce the winners. It usually takes me about a week to announce the winners. Andy's going in timeout. Andy's going in timeout. You got the answer, Andy. Now you're in timeout. Timeout. It usually takes me about a week because I have to notify the winners, and then I just have a lot of shit that I'm doing. So I don't think I can change any of the streaming parameters. While I'm in the middle of streaming, guys. OBS won't let me. Let's see, look. OBS, what are you doing, dude? Oh. No, I can't. I don't think I can. Let's get them uh, super chats. Super chats is what I was about to do. Uh, Ken Hicks, thank you for $5. Thanks for everything you do to help us. Al Markovich, thanks for $10. Uh, Amal Lee, thank you for $5. Has anybody successfully used a Jumper 4-in-1 module in a Nirvana TX? Uh, Amal, I know that the Nirvana firmware has support for the multi-protocol module, so you should be able to do it. Uh, but I don't know if anybody has. Motorsports APS, thanks for five pounds. My Crossfire RSSI in the OSD never goes above around 66. Link quality stays at 199. Do you have any ideas? Motorsports, the link quality is the one that concerns me the most. Uh, link quality should start at 300 when you're very, very close. Uh, and then it may drop to 199 as you get a little further away. But... Um, but uh, it, the fact that your link quality never hits 300 surprises me. It may be that you have locked the uh, module like to 50 hertz mode. I think that would be LQ of 100 then. Yeah. Uh, I mean, if the Crossfire RSSI in the OSD stays low, then you might just need to check the telemetry sensors in the module. It's possible that the OSD in the flight controller is messed up and you actually have fine OSD. But the LQ staying at 199 is definitive. That's There's something wrong there. I agree. I would check the antennas. I would see if I have the same problem with multiple receivers that would point to the module. If, uh, if it's only one receiver, then obviously it's the receiver or the antenna. That's the direction I would go with that. Thank you guys for sticking around while the stream is being a little glitchy. I we still have 543 viewers, so that's good. William Croth, thank you for $5. If I could only get one rapid fire or fusion, if I could only get one rapid fire or fusion, I'm going all crossfire with Tango 2 in the future. Um, the thing is, the fusion... I want them to release the hardware update for the Fusion that was supposed to bring the Fusion on par with Rapid Fire. As of today, the Fusion doesn't perform at the same level as Rapid Fire. Rapid Fire is still the gold standard. And the reason for that, according to LiveU FPV, LiveU has a YouTube channel where he does electronics repair and like really complicated fiddly solder. He was the guy who first released the 250 milliwatt upgrade for the Crossfire Micro Module. Um, and he did a video where he showed that the Fusion has a less sensitive 
analog decoder chip or something. Whereas the rapid fire has a higher spec chip and that's part of the reason why rapid fire performs better. Um, so TBS, when they designed the fusion, they did something really clever. They made the fusion so that the two boards can just split apart and the back board is the radio board and the front board is the screen and the, 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 the joystick and so forth. So what they could do is they could release this new backboard for the Fusion and everybody who already has one can just boop, throw out their old one, boop, put the new one on and suddenly we'll get rapid fire like performance. That's a plausible claim has yet to be proven because they haven't released the product. If you are going hard over for Crossfire, you're going to be using Tango 2. You're going to be using Crossfire on all your quads. It makes sense for you to get the Fusion because that's going to be all integrated into the TBS cloud where all your stuff is stored in the cloud and, and you're going to have the integration of like Wi-Fi module, uh, the, your, your video transmitter will follow your goggles. It's all going to be integrated and I think it makes sense to get the Fusion. You will, as of today, be giving up a little bit in terms of performance but the performance is still pretty good. And hopefully um, someone in my uh, Discord is telling me June, perhaps, they've hinted. Hopefully when, when they release that, that hardware update, then you'll even get like rapid fire like performance. Yeah. So I think if you're like just all crossfire, the fusion is clearly the module that you uh, would, be, would be looking for. I'm so excited that you guys are so excited about the giveaway. But the live stream, we're not doing the giveaway on the live stream, in case there was any confusion about that. Um, has the cutoff date passed? I think it probably has. When was the cutoff date for the for the drone? When did I say the cutoff was? Hang on. I should know better. I, everybody comes to the live stream and wants to see the giveaway. The cutoff date was April 12th. It's, oh! I can't do the giveaway, guys. The cutoff date is midnight tonight. There is still time for you to enter the giveaway. So I can't do the drawing because the cutoff date hasn't passed, right? Can't do the drawing. If you would like to enter to win one of... Th shh, Joshua, shh, shh. One of three Sedora SL5 SE quadcopters... Check out my April 2020 new product roundup and giveaway. The entry to win is in the video description down there. And there is still time to enter. Usually when people uh, when people ask about my giveaway, it's like, oh, you already missed the boat. Today, it's not that day. Network activity. What are you seeing, uh, Mr. Huggy? Mr. Huggy is showing... What is this, Mr. Huggy? What is this graphic, though? Network activity. Is that... Whose network activity is that, Mr. Huggy? Buffer health network activity. What is... What, do you, what tool is this? What tool is this? This is amazing. I don't know. Weird. Mr. Huggy has has these has some kind of debug or something going on. Pretty slick. Stats for nerds. Yeah. Yep. I mean, I'm getting errors. YouTube is not receiving enough video to maintain smooth stream. But I'm just streaming at my normal rate. I don't know what the issue would be. Like my... Nothing is using my CPU. I'm fine. Anyway... I don't know, dudes. I don't know. Moving on. Lucas Lipsky wants to know, what VTX up to $25 would you buy? Uh, how much are Rush a Tank VTX? I know what to do. This is the perfect opportunity for me to check out my Ultimate FPV shopping list, uh, where I have all my product recommendations, including a section on video transmitters. What video transmitter up to $25? Video transmitters. I've got the cheapest worth having as the Panda RC VT5805. And this one is $15. Pretty freaking good deal for $15. Oh, it's sold out at the moment. That's a shame. Uh, Race Day Quads Mach 3 comes in. I think that's close. I think that's over $25. No! Boom! $25! Exactly! 
Well, that's pretty good. And how about the rush tank? I think the rush tank is, is over 50, 20. It's 35. So I guess it would be the Mach 3. The Panda RC. Wait, wait, wait. What about the... What about these Panda RC? Is that 125? That one I think is also 35. Yeah, 33. Okay, so the Mach 3. That's the one I would go with. What about License to Drive points out? What about the new Nano Tramp? I think there are only pictures of that on Facebook. There's a new Nano Tramp coming out. A new Tiny Tramp uh, VTX as well. Pretty exciting. Kasiba says, Rush tanks have bad QC. Wow, I'm, that's the first time I've heard anybody say that. Uh, I've always felt that Rush tank had pretty good QC. I'm surprised. I wonder if they've slipped. What do you guys think? Kobe Zamora, best goggles for $100. Ishin EV 800D. Or maybe the Fat Shark Recon. Or is it the Scout that's 100 I can never get them backwards. Is it worth upgrading the DJI goggle antennas for better penetration? Or are the stock antennas best? Uh, the upgraded antennas definitely do give you better range. Do you, is it worth upgrading? I mean, it depends on how much you'll spend, but the, they definitely do give better range. Silva FPV says, My rush tank crapped out on me after setting up smart audio. That's hard to understand how that would happen. Like, how would smart audio kill your VTX? Very weird. Tater FPV says, I've had two of the tank minis fail. The original tank was a beast till I drowned it. That's very interesting, Tater FPV. I also have a build with a tank mini in it. And just yesterday I was flying it and I thought, am I at, uh, am I at 25 milliwatts? Because I'm not getting the range I expect. And then I looked and I was at 800 milliwatts. And I thought, wow, did my VTX fail? Is my antenna bad? Uh, maybe the tank mini has a problem. Hmm. We'll have to see. KVKV says, what about the compact antennas? Do they reduce range at all for the DJI? KVKV, you're probably thinking about the um, Flip. Uh, what's the company? Uh, hang on. True RC. You're thinking about these. These actually, uh, uh, the people I have know who use them say they increase range slightly. That's what they say. I haven't tested these myself, but I know plenty of people who use these full time and they say they increase range. So there you go. B42 now in the Discord says, I've got two quads with video issues. On one quad, there's an OSD flickering. What can I do about this? Let's see, can we see the OSD flickering? No. Um, so B42 now, uh, OSD flickering uh, is electrical noise from the motors causing the sync pulses of the OSD to get messed up and then you get the flickering OSD. The thing to do is to try to fix the noise. One way to address it is the grounding of the camera and the VTX. If the ground of the camera and the VTX are not at the same point, electrical potential you get this problem you can move the ground wire of the camera and solder it to the same pad as the ground wire of the vtx sometimes that'll fix it um anything you do that will reduce the electrical noise is going to help uh so adding a capacitor can help although if you're so bad that you're getting super glitchy osd that that probably will improve it but not completely fix it I think at that point, you definitely need to be thinking about something radical, like change from a, a VBAT to a voltage regulator or run the camera off the 5-volt regulator of the VTX. So, David06, everybody wants to know about the giveaway. When are the giveaway results going to be? The giveaway cutoff date is April 12th. So it is currently April 12th. So the giveaway can't draw the, can't draw the winner before everyone has had a chance to enter. So, can't draw the winner before. So, yeah, I will. I will draw the winner no earlier than midnight tonight. No earlier than midnight tonight. Oh my goodness! Oh my goodness! I'm going crazy. 
I'm going crazy. My nose is itching like crazy. And then the more I think about it, the more it itches. I can't believe it. I have no idea what's going on here. Okay. Pavel, Pavel Spakowski is talking about the PAL versus NTSC mismatch. Um, if you've got a PAL versus NTSC mismatch, as Pavel says, the most common thing that happens is you don't see the OSD at all. I have had some situations where you could see kind of like a ghostly OSD, but usually you probably wouldn't describe that as flickering. Flickering is almost always uh, video noise. Stray hair. Have I got a stray hair? I don't think so. I don't think so. One sticky outy hair. Yeah, it could be. Ruhan Doshi very, very much wants anyone in the stream, me, Pavel, anyone, to comment on the TMMRC F4 flight controller. I've never heard of it. So the answer to your question is, have you ever used it? No, I haven't. But let's look at it. It doesn't exist. It doesn't exist. There is no Google search result for TMMRC FC F4. Ruhan Doshi, I'm sorry to say you are from a dimension in which the TMMRC flight controller was invented, but you have somehow slipped into this dimension where it never was invented. So you got bigger problems than deciding what flight controller to use. I hope that that flight controller, uh, I hope that, that, that nothing else about the dimension has changed. Check on your family. Make sure they still exist. Uh, you know, just look for any other discrepancies. You guys know about the uh, the Berenstein Bears, the Berenstein Bears controversy. You guys know about this. Okay, you guys know the children. Don't look this stuff. Don't Google this. Don't Google this. Do you guys know the children's book, The Berenstein Bears, right? You guys, you guys know, a, a lot of people know that, in America at least. I don't know if they made it outside. The, don't look it up. Don't look. Don't, don't, ruin the, don't ruin it in the chat either. How do you spell Berenstein and the Berenstein Bears? Write it down. Type it out. Not in the chat. Don't, don't. Okay, type it out in the chat. What do you think the answer is? That's actually more fun. Type out how you spell Berenstein Bears in the chat. I have to wait for the chat to catch up. Squishy7, it's Berenstein. Type it out in the chat. What do you think? Now a lot of people think it is Bear and Stein. It's a it's a, Pavel Spakowski says I've never heard of these these books. Sorry, man. Oh, some people are getting it right. Some people are getting it right. Did you look it up beforehand, or did you already know the answer? A lot of people think it is Bear, like the animal Bear, because the Berenstein Bears are bears, and they think it's B E A R. But it's actually Berenstein. That's the name of the, I don't know, the name of the author. I don't know. It's Baron State. Now, here's why. Here's what. Here's why I'm talking about this. There are people who feel that it once was Baron Stain, Baron with B E A R, and that they're not misremembering it, but that they actually like shifted from another dimension into a dimension. And this whole this thing is called the Mandela effect. And you can go read about the Mandela effect if you want. There are many examples of the Mandela effect where people remember things wrong and are sure that it used to be a different way. And they think that this means that they've actually just slipped into a dimension where something changed. So you could check that out if you want to. <laughs> There's so many examples. People swear there was a Jiffy peanut butter. Looney Tunes versus Tunes. People misremember this. Berenstein, Berenstein. Did Curious George ever have a tail? Anyway. <laughs> oh, my gracious. How do you spell? Oh, some of these are so good. Anyway. Anyway. <laughs> <clears throat>
I got one more for you. This is not the Mandela effect. It's Easter, right? It's Easter. How did how did what day is Easter? How what day? It's April twelfth, obviously. But no, do you ever notice Easter isn't on the same day every year? April twelfth, whatever. And sometimes it's like really early in the year, and sometimes it's really late in the year. How is Easter, the date of Easter, determined? Well, Easter is, get this, get this. What, please. Can we just, oh my gosh. Oh, I shouldn't have clicked through. It was a big mistake. <laughs> Easter is always the first Sunday after the first full moon after the vernal equinox. The first Sunday after the first full moon after the vernal equinox. And I always I always thought this was amusing because of course Easter is a Christian holiday. And Sunday is a Christian holy day. So Easter is on a Sunday which is a Christian holy day. After the first full moon hold on back up. Christians aren't particularly attuned to the full moon. In fact, full moon is pretty pagan. After the vernal equinox, also pagan. So the holy is Christmas a holier holiday than Easter? Not sure about that. One of the holiest Christian holy days. Two of the three ways the date is determined. Pretty pagan. Anyway, just saying. Do what you got to do. <laughs> All right, let's get back to the Q and A. Ah, my nose is killing me. It's so itchy. Okay. Juiced Shurm Shurlemmer. Juiced Shurlemmer. Full crossfire with or without Bluetooth. What does it add or do for quads? Juiced. If you, uh, the big advantage of Bluetooth, in my opinion, is that it lets you connect to a ground station. If you're flying like RG Pilot or something, you can do uh, telemetry to a ground station and uh, the PC ground station can talk to the quad via the Bluetooth and the Crossfire link. Most people don't do that. The other advantage of Bluetooth is theoretically you can connect the Crossfire receiver to a UART on your quad and you can actually do Betaflight Configurator over Bluetooth over Crossfire. So you could do Betaflight Configurator without ever plugging in USB. It is possible to do that. Uh, but I think for most people, the Crossfire Lite module, it, without Bluetooth, I think most people aren't using Bluetooth. So. TSH Gaming. Do you have any tips for a total noob? I'm trying to learn how to fly. Simulator. Practice on the sim. Squishy wants to know, what's a typical KV for 6S 7-inch? Uh, here's the thing, Squishy. Everybody I know who's flying 7-inch on 6S just flies typical 6S motors. 1750 to 1900 KV, and it's fine. Um, it's a little overpropped, but just watch your throttle and you'll be fine. We got DVR of this video issue. Let's look at this. Let's see what we can see here. I mean, it's not a lot to see there, my friend. It's it's electrical noise. It's some kind of noise. The wide white bands are pretty weird. Usually, the electrical noise from motors will be small black or white band or white stripes. But uh, there's not a lot there to go on in just in that little GIF. <laughs> I agree that that doesn't look like pure electrical noise, though. Uh, but just based on that short GIF, I'm not sure I could uh, figure out what it is. Copter612 in the Discord wants to know how I feel about race wire. Uh, I don't use race wire as a matter of course 
I will use race wire when it's called for. I did put those cool LED race wires on my freestyle build, but the problem is that they break pretty quickly. The LEDs break pretty quickly just from being on the arms. And um, I probably wouldn't do it again. Um, the thing is, when I first build a quad, usually the ESC is pretty accessible and I just solder up the motors. If I have to change the motors later and it makes sense to add race wire, maybe I will. Joshua Tucker wants to know about his FreeSky RXSR and why it's such a piece of garbage. Oh, all right. Well, too late. You, I mean, you could you, that that was the time to ask me, right there. <laughs> Pavel suggests that that. Interference might be a receiver causing interference. Yeah, to me, those wide white bands in the video look like external interference. Like I would guess Wi-Fi, but it can't be Wi-Fi while you're flying up in the air. I mean, I guess that's not impossible, but it doesn't seem likely. So it makes me think maybe it's got something to do. I think that's a good guess, Pavel. It might be the receiver. Try doing a test flight with your receiver unplugged. Wait a minute. <laughs> Skadoosh argues that race wire is just extra solder and failure points. There are builds where race wire makes sense. If the 4-in-1 ESC is buried up inside the quad, race wire makes sense. If the motor, here's my number one place where I use race wire. If the motor already had the wires cut short because you used the motor on an individual ESC and now you're switching to a 4-in-1, it totally makes sense to use race wire. Fear for Fun wants to know if I tested 4S 1800 versus 6S 1250. I totally did that, man. Uh, I did that, but uh, hmm. But uh, yeah, here we go. Fear for Fun. Here is the video you want. 6S versus 4S equal watt hour bench test 1250 ma. August first, two thousand nineteen. That's the video that you want, my friend. Uh, including the 1800 milliamp hour. Let me put that in the chat for you. Fear for fun? There you go, dude. Sharp Pizza wants to know, will the Crossfire mod on the QX7 prevent it from connecting to other FreeSky receivers? No, not at all. Um, it, 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 you're just putting a faster inverter on the signal line so it is more performance. It doesn't affect uh, compatibility with other receivers at all. Gavin Brooks wants to know, crossfire on SBUS, any downsides? Um, yeah, the latency on SBUS is higher and you're not gonna get the nice crossfire telemetry. Don't worry about it, Fear for Fun. I, I know what to search for to find my own videos better than you do. So don't feel bad that you couldn't find that video. I found it in three seconds just because I kind of, my brain works. When I think, what would I title that video? I'm likely to be right. And when you think, what did Joshua title that video? You're less likely to be right because you don't have my brain. That's all. Okay. What is that clear non-conductive tape that I use? It is Kapton tape, K-A-P-T-O-N. It is Kapton tape. Hang on one second. I want to show you guys something. Which is the, it's this one. I want to show you guys a flight from yesterday. Was it this one? Hang on. Joshua licks your face. Hang on one second here. Can I show you guys this? Oh, perfect. It's just started. And we'll get the sound up as well.
I've been doing my uh, three packs a day challenge. And I think I've gotten better. Mr. Blair, Crossfire Transmit Power in the OSD. You need to use the Evo or Brain FPV Radix. Beta Flight cannot do it. <laughs> this is the Stingy. Uh, no, my bad. This is the Rotorite HD1 with blaster motors. Watch this. Ready? Watch this. Oh, I'm so proud of myself right now. Oh, look at that. Come on. That's pretty good. Check this out. Check this out. Oh, end of the trees. Hell yeah. Little too many, little too many power loops at the end. I kind of ran out of steam, but and we're done. And breathe. That's a GoPro, uh, GoPro Hero Seven. Woo! So for the anybody out there who's thinking, uh, does the three packs a day challenge work? Is three packs a day enough to improve? I feel like the answer is yes. I feel like the answer is yes. Lots of buffering, unfortunately, for the, yeah. It was with the DJI. That was the uh, Rotorite HD1 with DJI. Yep. All right. Dreams FPV, thank you for $2. That's all. Uh, oh, no, there's a question. Why isn't there a slider in the PID section of Betaflight? My guess, Dreams, is that you're using an older version of Betaflight. I think the sliders only appear on 4.1. Not a hundred percent sure about that, but I, that may be it. You may also need to update your configurator, Dreams FPV. Make sure you're on the latest one. William Croth, thanks for five dollars. Can you please use your influence to get a poo emoji body five three inch drone made for me? No, William, thank you for five dollar donation. That is not where I will be spending my influence in the in the hobby on getting a poo emoji drone for you. Good luck with that, though. I mean, I agree that that is a worthwhile goal. I hope that you succeed. Gaptooth Granny, thank you for five Canadian dollars. SpeedyB doesn't work on Android 10? That's news to me, man. Can anyone confirm that? Does SpeedyB not work on Android 10, or is it just Gaptooth Granny's phone that has a problem? Let's check the chat here. <laughs> Thank you, Tater FPV, for 10 Canadian dollars. Your help over the years has been invaluable. Thank you very much. Happy Easter to you, too. Peter Walker, thank you for $5. Loctite motor screws or no? Um, Peter, I usually don't Loctite my motor screws because I'm lazy, but if uh, I should, and it'd be better if I did, and so far I mostly haven't lost a motor. Um, especially if you're only using, like, two screws for some reason, then you've got to Loctite them. But I just make sure they're snug and in general they don't come out. MBFPV says SpeedyB works fine on my Android 10. I think it's just you, man. Gaptooth Granny, I don't know why your phone isn't working. SpeedyB seems to work okay for everybody else. Noah Harnett, thank you for $2. Brandon RC, thank you for $15. No worries about the bad video. Thank you for turning me into an FPV addict. Your website's amazing and it has helped me out tons. Thank you. I try to keep that website up to date as best I can. 
William Croth. I already got you there, William. I'm caught up on the Super Chats. Oh, and Martin Hood, thank you for a $5 emoji. Does FlySky work with simulators? Gabriel Rice. All OpenTX radios work with simulator. Just plug it into USB and it should you should be able to get it to work. MCP FPV says, if you check your motors, you don't need Loctite. Well, yeah, I mean, if you check every screw before every build, you don't need Loctite, but maybe you don't want to do that. Loctite makes sense, but... I'm, I mean, I'm so lazy when I'm building. I just don't want to lock tight every screw, so I don't do it. Oh, does FlySky? Oh, sorry, man, I misread. Does FlySky work with? Uh, does FlySky work with oh, simulators? Some FlySky radios can run OpenTX. Uh, I'm hedging here. Like the the underground FPV Nirvana is a FlySky radio, and it runs OpenTX, and it works with simulators. But in general, it's harder to make a FlySky radio work with a simulator, um, you would need some kind of an adapter. But remember, if you have a Betaflight flight controller, the Betaflight flight controller can act as the USB interface. So anything that can bind to a Betaflight flight controller can be used with a simulator. I have a video about how to do that. Hold on. Uh, this one. So any any controller that can connect to an F4, it doesn't work on F3, connect to an F4 flight controller or newer can be used with a simulator, even if it doesn't plug into the computer directly. directly. Why isn't there a slider for I in the PIDs? There's not an eye gain slider. Are you for real? Let's let's look. I mean, I I do agree that the 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 PID sliders could be a little better. Um, so here in the PID tuning, what do we got? Oh, enable sliders. Where's the eye gain slider? Yeah, where's the eye gain slider? What about eye? Yeah, good point. I don't know. I guess you turn them. See, here's what I don't like about the sliders. Hang on a second. Let me. Okay. Uh, here's what I don't like. Let's say I want to turn the D gain up. How do I do that? There's no slider for D gain. What I have to do is turn the PD gain up and then turn the PD balance down. I was like, well, can't I just have a D gain slider? And it'll automatically just, as I raise the D-gain slider, the P-D-gain slider automatically goes down proportional and so that they, they maintain their, their correct ratio relative to each other. So if you want to turn I-gain up, what do you do? Okay, what you got to do is you got to turn master multiplier up and then P-D-gain down to get backward. Okay, I mean, it's kind of unwieldy. And I realize that I think what they're trying to do is avoid interrelation between the sliders. So like if you turn the I gain up, the PD gain would have to proportionally go down to keep the master multiplier correct. But I feel like they could work the math out. So as you move one slider, the other one moves too, so that everything is correct. But no, it's a little annoying. It's a little annoying. I do agree, it's a little annoying. You can make a PPM to microphone jack and use Smart Pro Pro Plus. I hate that approach, Abdullah. I'm sorry. I know that it is an approach that does work for people. The The Smart Pro Pro via audio interface has so much jitter. It's kind of unflyable. I tried it once. It's, it's kind of unflyable how bad it is. It's better than nothing, barely. But if you have a Betaflight flight controller, F4 or newer, you can just... Use your quadcopter to get a nice digital interface to the, and that's that's the way to go. Martin Dehan, is the Acon F7 flight controller good? I just bought it. I mean, you just bought it, so you're gonna you tell me. It's always funny to me when people ask that question. I'm not. I don't mean to pick on you, Martin. People are like. Is this part any good? I'm like, well, I, you know, I, I kind of would buy something. They're like, well, I just bought it. I'm like, okay, well, what? I mean, you, it's yours now. <laughs> what, what, what does it matter? 
You, you own it. Fly it. <laughs> Is this a good flight controller? I, I don't know. You're, you're about to find out. And then if it turns out that it's good, fantastic. And if it turns out that it's bad, then you'll buy a different one. But if you really want my advice, ask me before you buy it. Because once you put your money down, I mean, there are very few products out there that are so bad that after you already purchase it, I would say, oh, don't put that on your quad, man. That's really bad. Just just get your money back. Once you've paid for it, you may as well fly it. So I don't know a lot about that flight controller specifically, Martin. The Acon F7. Acon makes great ESCs. Presumably they make a good flight controller too. B42 now. We're still talking about the... Where's the... You got a longer one, dude? Let's look at this interference. We'll go back to this interference here. This isn't a GIF, though. This is just a... Oh, here it is. I see. Close other tabs. Get out of here. Other tabs. The GIF is loading. The GIF is loading slowly. Yikes. Yowza. Okay, this is horrible, first of all. It really looks like external interference to me. It doesn't seem tied to your motor RPM at all. Like, I can kind of tell when you're probably hitting the throttle based on what the quad is doing. It doesn't seem tied to, like, your motor RPM. It seems kind of random. It feels like external noise. Even if it was something like a voltage regulator going bad, it would have some periodicity to it. And it just doesn't seem to have any periodicity to it. So I feel like it's external interference of some kind. Does it happen even when you are not flying? That's a good question. That's a good question, B42 now. Does it happen even when you're not flying? Well, Farben Frohis Grau, what quad would you recommend for a beginner who's flown sim for two months? Around $300. Uh, iFlight Sedora is about $300. Is a very, very good quad. Comes in around 300 bucks. That's a place to go. Some people are suggesting loose antenna. I guess it's possible. Are the antennas the same polarization? Asks Nimble Gimbal. I don't think mixed polarization antennas would cause this. Mixed polarization would just cause weak signal, but not these white stripes that come out of nowhere. Best racing frame for 2020, asks Rajat Mondal. Um, I, I mean, like, wh I'm not, what do I know about racing? If you want me to recommend a racing frame, I'm going to look at the Evan Turner Project 533 frame. I'm going to look at the Lumineer Chief frame by Alex Campbell. The fact that those two guys both live in Tennessee and are friends of mine has nothing to do with that. They just are great racers who make great products. And um, the um, Bob Ruge Kebab's uh, toothpick, not toothpick, the floss, hyperfloss, hyperlate floss, that's a good one. Uh, yeah, the 533 switchback. There are so many great frames out there, and I don't know a ton. I don't like, I don't race a lot, and I'm not like up on the latest in racing gear. So when people ask me to recommend racing gear, I just think about who I know and what they fly, and I tell you that. Um, so I hope I'm not pissing off any vendors who make great racing frames. You just those are the ones that come to my mind. Spacey Funk says a cell tower could be doing it. Yeah. So if it's external interference, it is going to happen in one location, but not another location. If it's a cell tower, it will only happen at this soccer field, but not at home. The other key thing when dealing with video interference is, does it happen even when your motors aren't spinning? Because electrical interference from the motors is very common, but obviously if you haven't armed the quad yet, that's not it. And then another thing is interference from the receiver. And here's how, you, here's how you troubleshoot that. Turn off your transmitter. If the interference appears the minute you turn your transmitter on, it's your receiver and specifically telemetry. So these are things that, that you could do to kind of home in on the source of the interference. B42 now says it mostly happens when I push the throttle. Same VTX. I don't have this issue at the same spot three minutes later. Yeah, so it's not location sensitive, so it's not interference like from the field. Only in the air. Damn. 
Is it only if you arm but don't take off and just spin the motors? Yeah. We, we got to ask questions like this to try to home in on the cause. Budget FPV wants to know if I'm still doing 3D printing. Absolutely. Absolutely. Um, I've been a little focused on this Tyro 119 build lately, so I haven't been making content about 3D printing quite as much. Budget FPV wants the settings for my Ender 3 TPU. I actually have... I have a uh, shared folder. Hang on. I have a shared folder. Hang on, let me get the link for you. Why does the... Why the... That's weird. Oh, there we go. Um, boom. Here's a link to my 3D printing profiles. Uh, for Cura. You can grab those. That's one for the Ender and two for the Sobel. I don't have a ton of them yet. Dare Ray says, if it only happens in the air, that means that there's distance. Maybe there's a mismatch on the VTX. I don't think this is a channel mismatch. When you have a channel mismatch, you'll see distorted video, but this the video is clear, and then there's this big white stripe through it. To me, that doesn't feel like on the wrong channel. Let's see. Lawrence Martin, thank you for $3 in the super chat. Fist bump. Rafikil, do you know anything about a GTEC A20M? I can't find much support or help on them. Um, so the GTEC A20M is a very interesting 3D printer. Let's take a closer look at that. The A20M, no, those are the A20. Where's the A20M? Oh, I put an AT in there. A20M. Here's what's cool about the GTEC A20M. It has a single hot end, but dual extruders. So it's a Y-shaped channel into the hot end. And basically you can switch extruders as you go. So you can run two different filament and kind of transition between the filament gradually during the print. Or you can actually, you can switch filament in the middle of a print but it has to kind of, it prints what's called uh, kind of like a, a tower of waste filament. So when it needs to switch, it extrudes and gets rid of the one color until it's printing the other, and then it comes back. I have one of these that they sent me to review, and you haven't seen the review yet because I've been having so much trouble with it. Uh, which I guess, and, and I actually, I had a ton of trouble with it, and I said, well, I can't, I don't know if it's me or the printer. Maybe I'm just a noob. I am a noob at at uh, at 3D printing. So I actually gave this to a friend of mine who's been 3D printing for years, and I said, "Dude, if you can make any sense out of this, you could just help me. Can you help me?" And even with his input, like I have the, I think this is like a clever idea, but it's kind of poorly executed. So I, I'm not a fan of the A20M. Here's one one of the problems is that let me. Hang on, let me pull up this these pictures. I'll show you what I mean. Uh, one second. So here's one problem with the A20M. First of all, we just had trouble getting it to print. It had some issue with the G-code where it would freeze in the middle of a print. Here's the biggest problem with the A20M. So the A20M has dual extruders but a single hot end. And what that means is that when you print... If you want to switch colors, it has to do this, oh my goodness, it has to do this this tower here. When it wants to switch colors, it moves the nozzle over and it prints some waste filament to, to, to purge the nozzle of the one color until it can print the other color. And that means that to print this two color Benchy, look at how much filament we wasted. So this idea that the A20M is usable as a two-color printer only if you want to waste a shitload of filament, right? I wouldn't want to do that. Now, if you're going to do a print like they show in their sample where throughout the print it kind of gradually transitions, that's fine. Basically, what it does is it prints like 25% 
extrusion on the left and and 75 percent extrusion on the right and you get this mix of colors but you don't really get the mix of colors because this is this is not what you actually get what happens is the two colors don't merge in the hot end you end up with like one laying on top of the other as it comes out so it's not actually really it's 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 this really finicky weird and here's the other thing you might think well i could print like uh pla here and tpu there oh you can't see i could print pla on the left and tpu on the right no because they have different hot end temperatures right so you can't mix different filament types and if you try to use it as a single extruder the filament will ooze out the other side so it's really it's really finicky i i think if you want to do dual printing you need a dual hot end you need a dual nozzle not just a dual extruder with a single nozzle but I, it's, i'm not an expert on 3d printing but even after handing this printer off to my friend who is an expert there were all kinds of issues with it and it just seems like a clever idea but mm, kind of here's what you here i got the oh this is a great picture here's what you actually get so this is red this is blue and red and you can see how it's sort of transitioning kind of to purple yeah it's 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 we had it yeah it's it's yeah i don't, I don't love it so i may not be reviewing the a20m because i'm not sure i'm not sure that we ever got it working great and when it is working great i'm not sure that it's anyway What's a good replacement for the Helio Spring flight controller, Martin Dehan? Uh, any any flight controller that can run Emu Flight can have similar functionality to the Helio Spring, um, if that's what you're looking for. He, Emu Flight makes Helio Spring performance available to any Betaflight flight controller. License to Drive says I've printed dual color filament. The results are quite interesting, especially with things in Vos mode. Let's see. Someone up above asked if I would shout out Finnish pilots. Okay. Hey, what's up, Finnish pilots? Hey, hey, uh, hey, Fids. When you're done flying, do you say? They say uh, he landed his quad, and they asked him if he was going to keep flying. He said, "No, I'm finished." <laughs> oh. Uh, a minister, a priest, and a rabbit walk into a blood drive. And the clerk asks what their blood type is. The rabbit says, I'm a typo. Think about that one. Am I flying Crossfire Shot regularly, Copter 612? Yeah, Copter 612, I'm running the Crossfire Shot firmware on my T16. All of my Crossfire quads are running Crossfire Shot. And can I tell you, can I tell you how nice it is just the other day, I went to fly a quad. I hadn't flown in a few a few weeks. Set it down, plugged in the battery, went to arm, didn't arm. Because I updated the Crossfire Shot firmware on my module, but the, the radio, the, the, the receiver, didn't have the updated firmware. Crossfire, over-the-air firmware update. Two minutes later, I was in the air. I appreciate. That is my favorite feature of Crossfire. For everything else Crossfire does... The ability to, because I was like, oh, crap, I got to update the firmware on this receiver. I was ready to fly. My my earphones were in. My song was queued up. I was ready to go. Ugh. Just boop, 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 Update, done, ready to go. Beautiful. Can you still get products from websites like Banggood with COVID happening? Shurik FPV, I am not a doctor. Please, please uh, refer to official medical sources for all of your information about the coronavirus. However, here is what my personal take on it. Um, coronavirus does survive on surfaces. Some people have said it is uh, as much as three days under optimal conditions. What that means is that you, you, you are unlikely to get a product from China fast enough that coronavirus is on the product inside the box. But there is a non-zero chance that your mail carrier could have contaminated the outside of the box with coronavirus. So, 
every all official sources say that the chances are very small and and it is not seen as a major transmission vector according to the like the CDC and whoever the WHO however chances of something being on the it's going to take 2 weeks to get to you so the if there was coronavirus on it when they packaged it it will not be an issue once you get it but your but the outside of the package could have been contaminated by your mail carrier what some people are doing is they're treating their mail as potentially contaminated they're quarantining their mail for 3 days and then then they're opening their mail i'm not now you could decide how you feel about that but that's my understanding viruses are not actually alive you're right it's it's in whether it's the likelihood of in being infectious anyway oh Oh, maybe <laughs> GB7000 says, I think he just meant, are they shipping? Uh, yeah, I don't know what the status is of shipping. Can you still get products? Are they shipping? I've heard of people getting orders canceled. But uh, as far as I know, like they're still shipping any product that they can get. Thank you for the shout out, Kenneth Hale, RC and FPV Adventures. Thank you for the shout out. Carl, thank you for $5 super chat. Banggood ha does have a USA warehouse, Brent Vogelsgang, but the uh, the uh it has far far fewer products than the uh than than the China warehouse. There is a USA warehouse though. Kosiba points out that currently according to official numbers, which not everyone believes, but According to official numbers, it's actually riskier to order a product from America than from China because America has had a lot more cases right now. So, anyway, uh, Gal Kremer says most vendors are shipping product, but there are major delays. Yeah, um, the the shipping delays are because there are far fewer flights running. Um, commercial flights, just passenger flights. A lot of passenger flights also carry cargo. And with the passenger flights down, cargo is taking longer to get there. Ian F. reminds us this is a great time to support any local vendors. If you have vendors in your country, they need your business right now. Uh, so, Corinne Dubois, Dubois, Corinne Dubois, every time I boot my quad up, pit mode is turned on. When I try to disable it in the OSD, it doesn't turn off. But when I change VTX output strength, it goes to normal again. Corinne, if you have a TBS Unify VTX, it can be changed. I think with Unify, what you do is you hold the button down as you power it on. And it switches it between pit mode and not pit mode. When pit mode is on, the Unify powers up in pit mode all the time, no matter what you do. So what I would tell you to do, Corinne, is hold down the button and then power up the VTX and wait. And I think that should turn pit mode off and then you should be fine. Anders Martinson, uh, whether the, the official coronavirus numbers are accurate is not a topic that I am either, I am neither... Uh, it is not something I am qualified to comment on, nor is it on topic for my live stream. So I'm just going to dodge that entirely. Like there's a fine line I want to walk between is it safe to order product? That's on topic. Ciati is here. Skirdone asks, does the flight controller sense weight distribution in ACRA mode? Uh, SRQ drone, that's a very good question. Um, the flight controller has the gyro sensor and the gyro sensor tells the flight controller how the quadcopter is moving, specifically how it is rotating. So in as much as the weight distribution affects the rotation of the quad, yes, the flight controller does respond to the weight distribution of the quad. If you have a quad that is front heavy, what will happen is that as the quad takes off, the front of the quad will tend to pitch forward. I should use an actual quadcopter. Here we go. What will happen is that the front of the quad will tend to pitch forward because of the additional weight. The flight controller will detect that rotation 
and will compensate for it by raising the speed of the front motors until the rotation stops. So the flight controller does, it doesn't detect the weight distribution directly, but it detects the effect that the weight distribution has on the movement of the quadcopter. Jack Nimble asks, is there a good method to improve video signal on the Tiny Hawk? Seems to get terrible super quick. Jack Nimble, the first thing I would do is make sure I didn't have a damaged antenna. The uh, video range on the Tiny Hawk, uh, the video range on all micro quads is poor. They're limited to 25 milliwatts most of the time. And even when they are actually outputting their proper 25 milliwatts, they have these little whip antennas, which often are pretty, oftentimes are pretty crappy. Uh, Ciotti points out that changing over to a circular polarized antenna will help. Changing over to any high quality, properly made antenna will help. But the real thing you would need to do if you really wanted to improve the range is get something like a, a TBS Unified Nano, like a good quality Nano VTX and add that. A lot of people don't want to do that. Tiny Hawk 2 goes to 200 milliwatts. Totes, yeah, um, so at 200 milliwatts, you should be getting better range. If you're getting crap range on 200 milliwatts, check your antenna to see if it's if it's broken. Uh, Boots to Monkey. Uh, Boots to Monkey, if you have a lost package from Race Day Quads, Race Day Quads' official policy is that if you don't get your package because UPS screwed you, they take care of it. And I, I, don't, I wouldn't say that like to I wouldn't want to put race day quads in an awkward position but multiple times on Facebook I have seen race day quads say if you if UPS if USPS loses your package you do not need to the people are like do I need to buy insurance they say no we just make it right when you buy a product from us you get your product so if if USPS lost your package contact race day quads and they should make it right like I'm like is that right Brady Lotz, good question. On my website, I recommended the Sedora, but I compared the Sedora and the Nazgul, and I preferred the Nazgul. Um, yeah, good question. Um, what goes on my website is not just, it's not always the absolute best in every category. The problem with the Nazgul is that the Nazgul is only available on Banggood, and it actually may not, it may be discontinued at this point. Um, the reason I put the Sedora on my website and not the Nazgul is that the Sedora is available all around the world. And I take into account your ability to buy the product as well as whether it's a great product. If there is an excellent product that's the best in its category, but you can only buy it from this one tiny vendor in Austria and they only make five of them a month, I'm not going to put it on my website because you're going to want to buy it. You're not going to be able to buy it and that's going to piss you off. So I put the Sedora on the website and not the Nazgul because the Nazgul was only available on Banggood, I think, whereas the Sedora is widely available. That's what I that's what I remember. But a good question. Josh Walsh wants to know, with motor output limit in Betaflight, is there any reason to get 1,800 kV motors? Or should I just keep buying 2,450 kV motors and use motor output limit? Um, Josh, if you're running 6S, then definitely buy the lowest kV that makes sense for your use case. There is a downside to running 6S 2,450 kV with a motor limit versus just running 1,800 kV. But it's not as much of a difference as you might think. And like what I when I ran um, 2150 kV on 6S, I was really impressed with the options because you could have a 100% throttle limit or motor out. I was using throttle limit, but you could have a 100% throttle limit and have ridiculous power and speed 6S 2150 kV. You could dial that throttle limit down just a little bit and get a balance or you could dial it way down to like 66 percent and get basically 4s performance and you could kind of have it both ways and that was kind of cool i'm not sure i would recommend 2450 kv on 6s because that's just more than most builds are going to easily be able to handle but the direction you're thinking does make sense <laughs> ben geichenbeek 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 Sorry, Ben. 
Why is the R9M FreeSky D protocol not working, but the Jumper 4-in-1 FreeSky D protocol is working? Ben, I don't know the specific answer. I'm a little confused by your question because R9 doesn't R9 only binds to R9. It doesn't support D protocol, but the short an, that may be the answer. R9 doesn't only binds to R9. Doesn't bind to D8. Doghouse FPV wants to know does 1.2 gig video have a fundamentally greater latency like some people claim? No, that makes no sense. The low the carrier frequency does not affect the latency at all. It doesn't at all. Some people think that the lower frequency means you have more latency. The lower frequency doesn't affect the propagation speed. The speed of propagation through a medium is is for the speed of light in the medium. Um there is no reason why 1.2 gig would have fundamentally greater latency because think because the thing is you've got the encoded signal but then it is modulated to the carrier frequency and then upon reception it is demodulated back to the baseband and i don't think the carrier frequency affects the latency in any meaningful way um lower fidelity video signal reproduction because of the lower carrier frequency no that is also incorrect sort of there is what you've got a baseband frequency and it is encoding certain information and it is then modulated to the carrier frequency 1.2 whatever gigahertz now the, there is no reason why that carrier frequency should affect the amount of information that the baseband signal carries but depending on the amount of bandwidth available you may have a limitation so what I think you're seeing is that the 1.2 gigahertz band is much narrower than the 5 gigahertz band. Therefore, the amount of information that 1.2 gigahertz can encode is less. But that doesn't, that's not because 1.2 gigahertz is a lower frequency. It's because arbitrarily, from a regulatory perspective, they have limited the bandwidth available down at that frequency. Drone Aharia is showing us a new feature from Betaflight 4.2, Betaflight Turtle Mode Assistance. I think I, I think I know what we're gonna see. Let's check it out. Hang on, I'm gonna, I'm gonna have, we got audio. Oh, I don't want audio. I don't want any mu copyrighted music. Betaflight 4.2 is coming. I think it's targeted for May 1st. Coming soon. We're upside down. What do we got? Yeah, we got the arrow. Does it auto flip though? Oh, that's that's cute. That's cute. But but I thought it was going to be something cooler. Hang on. If you guys fly Falco X, you know what I'm doing here. If you guys don't fly Falco X, check this out. Hang on, I have to find the flight. Well, there's only two flights here, so it shouldn't be too hard. This is uh the Diatone GTB 339 with Falco X on it. My DVR is kind of dark. I've got to find out a place where I crash. There we go. So check out what Falco X does with it when you turtle mode. It auto flips. So first of all, you can see that as I'm flipping, as I've disarmed, it can tell that I'm crashing and it has automatically turned on turtle mode because Falco X just knows that I'm crashing. So here, I haven't done this. I haven't flipped a switch. It just automatically turned on turtle mode. And then when I arm, see, look, it's flashing Quopa on. As soon as I arm, it automatically flips the quad over. Or it's going to try to anyway. I don't. I, th I think the prop is blocked. I don't think it's going to succeed. Did it? No. Oh, hang on. Let's try again. This might not have been the best crash to pick. So Falco X automatically flips over the quad. That is pretty freaking cool. Uh, and I'm surprised that Betaflight hasn't just ripped that right off. I mean, not that there'd be anything wrong with that. You know, it's a good feature. It's not like it. We got any upside down? Can I demonstrate this turtle mode? Flippity fly, flippity fly. Nope. All right. Did I crash? Oh, here we go. Yeah. Okay. Ready? Oh. Ah. I didn't do that. I just armed the quad and it goes and flips itself over. It's pretty freaking cool. Little 
That that arrow is cute, but like I think I know which direction to turn over. I can see which direction to turn over. Siadi FPV says, what if there's someone near it or somebody goes to pick it up or if you're in a tree? Yeah, Siadi. So um, I assume there's a way to override it. Like, for example, I don't know. I just I just used it and I'm not an expert on Falco X. Um, for example, if you like flip, you can put it on a, on a switch. So like presumably if you flip the switch, then it lets you have control. That's how I would assume it works. Um, you have to flip the switch to cause it to flip. So if you just flip the arm switch, it flips itself over. But presumably if you manually activate the mode, then it it's just normal. Yeah, exactly, Dreams FPV. You have to arm it. You decide when it flips, but it auto flips itself. Why is it unsafe, Pavel? It doesn't flip itself until you flip the arm switch. And then it just looks at what direction it's tilted and flips itself over. Why is it unsafe? I mean, it's up to you. You decide when to use it. And you can override it. Shyam points out, trying to flip on its own might burn out the motors or ESC. I don't know about that. Um, Like, I've known a lot of people who burned out an ESC trying to turtle mode. Just going like... Yeah. You have to decide when this works. How come my background is DJI if I'm flying analog, Bugsy Seagulls? Bugsy, I'm flying both DJI and analog. The main reason I use this background is because this is an awesome freaking photograph. This is an amazing photograph by uh, Scarecrow FPV, J.R. Pellegrini. It's just an amazing photograph, and I love it. And it's got my JV logo, and it's got this cool pink quad. I mean, I fly DJI and analog, depending on which quad I grab. So, you know what? That's cool. I don't wanna have to hide no more. It shouldn't be a fair. I wanna go and I wanna know. Do you wanna follow? Yeah, sorry, that music auto starts when I bring that scene up. Yeah, MBFPV, I agree with your perspective. Uh, manual turtle mode, I think it's more likely to burn a motor because you almost always use more throttle than you need. The auto quopa has an amount of finesse that you lack. It hits the motor just until it starts to flip over, and then and there you go. Um, the flip side is auto quopa if the prop is blocked, it just like spins the motor. Whereas with manual with turtle mode, you can kind of bump the throttle and see if the prop is blocked. So it's nice to have the option. That's all. It's nice to have the option. Well, here's what I hate about turtle mode. You ready? You're upside down and you turtle mode and it goes bump bump and you're like upside down eight inches to the right. Ah, uh, bump bump. Ah. So. When is Betaflight GPS going to be reliable like iNav, JMBB, FPV? Whenever the Betaflight devs decide that to put effort into it, which is probably never. So, Johnny FPV wants to know if it's a good idea to build a 533 switchback freestyle rig. Uh, yeah, I think that race rigs fly amazing for freestyle. Um, I was just talking about that earlier. The challenge with the 533 is going to be getting a GoPro on top, but I'm sure you can figure that out if you have a 3D printer. Um, the weight distribution for a, a bottom mount battery with a GoPro on top, it's going to be elongated uh, along the Z axis, whereas freestyle rigs are usually elongated along the Y axis. Um, so it's going to fly a little different, but it'll fly good. I think you should go for it. The biggest limitation of the 533 to me is that it only takes a nano camera. The Runcam Racer 2 Nano is what Evan Turner flies. And I actually, I, I think it's okay, but it's not my favorite. It's not my favorite camera. Flacky wants to know if there is any image compromise with the Vista over the air unit. Um, the Vista in high multipath environments will have earlier breakup and the Vista has a lot more problem with heat buildup. And as heat builds up, 
the image degrades or, or because it has to reduce the output power. So the Vista has the same, under the best conditions, the Vista has the same image quality as the air unit, but then it is more likely to degrade as conditions get worse, if that makes sense. Yeah. Caddx Retel Nano. Oh, that sounds good. I like the sound of that. I just the racer, the Runcam Racer Two Nano. It whites out really bad under exposure changes. Doctor Steve Morale says, "I presume three D setups don't need turtle mode." Steve, three D mode is a little different than turtle mode. When you're in three D mode and you arm all of the props begin to spin. When you're in turtle mode, only two of the props move. The other two props are assumed to be down in the grass. So the idea with turtle mode is spin just the prop necessary to flip the quad over. Whereas in 3D mode, all the props begin to spin and it tries to fly. 3D pilots still have a use for turtle mode because sometimes you just want to spin one or two motors and not all four. Anders Martinson says, is Real Steady Go worth $100? Having a hard time justifying it. Anders, there's no question that Real Steady is the best stabilization software you can get. Something like After Effects with Warp Stabilize plugin, the best Warp Stabilize you ever saw is nowhere near as good as Real Steady. So the question is, and let's not forget, Real Steady used to be a $400 plugin that you had to use with After Effects, which is itself. So you used to have to spend $500 or more just to get into Real Steady. When they released Real Steady Go for only $100, I was like, wow, this is a great deal. Now the question is just whether you want to spend $100 to get Real Steady. How much do you value that stabilized footage? If you're trying to be Air Blaster, you just got to buy Real Steady. That's how you make content that looks like that. If you're trying to do Cinewhoop stuff, real steady. You just got to get it. Um, the the, the trade-off is you could get a GoPro 8. GoPro 8 uh, uh, Hyper Smooth Boost is on par with real steady. In, in, I've seen some side-by-sides. Hyper Smooth Boost is on par with real steady. But here's the difference. With real steady you have the option in post to tweak the keyframes and get the result you want. Whereas HyperSmooth Boost, it's just going to do its thing and the stabilization is baked into the video. Okay? Now, hang on. There's a third option. Check this out. I've been playing with the Insta360. Now, this is... Here's... I'm, I'm, I'm starting to frame my review of this camera because this camera... It's like $570 and you get the 360 lens. And I don't have it handy. You get the 360 lens and you get the 4K wide angle lens. And what's in, so that for, for the price of a GoPro Max, you get basically a GoPro and a three and a GoPro Max. Is the quality as good as the GoPro Max? Wait for my full review. But here's what's cool about this. Hang on. No, 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 not Fusion 360. Hello, Insta. There we go. Check this out. Any minute now. This is the Insta360 software. Hang on. Let me move this over to the other screen so I can keep watching your chats. Let me pull. Now, Insta360, it doesn't output MP4s. It outputs this format called Inziva. It is a proprietary Insta360 format. And every file you output from the Insta360, you have to tweak. But what's cool about it is that you can choose in post. I think I think for the for the wide angle it's just going to be whether you stabilize or not. It's not going to have the real steady function though. Hello. Can I can I have this footage? Oh great, it's going to screw up now that I'm on the live stream. It's not working. Great. Way to go in. There you go. So in the Insta360, you can actually turn the stabilization on and off. I guess you can't really tweak the stabilization though. That's a shame. You can't like have keyframes. Can you have keyframes? No, no keyframes except on the 360 footage. That's too bad. Well, I guess it's not as good as I thought it was. I thought you were going to be able to tweak it. 
So should you spend $100 on real steady? If you need real steady, if you need stabilization, yes. That's the, you just got to do it. That's that's the thing. Is it a true assumption that most real steady footage looks the same in terms of being locked in? Oh, I'm not sure if I can understand that question. License to drive. Locked in. I will say that if you have stabilized footage, sharp moves get their edges rounded off. Um, let me show you an example. Oh, you're not going to... You're not going to be able to see it anyway because the stream is going to mangle it. Here's what I mean, though. Let's say you do a juicy flick and you go whoop, and you do that 180 flick super fast. If you have stabilization on, you're going to hear the motors spin up, but the flick is going to start early and be spread out because the stabilization is going to it, it's trying to remove sharp moves. So if you have a lot of sharp moves and you have stabilization on, it's going to affect that and make those sharp moves look less sharp and more smooth. And that's where real steady is really nice because you can tweak that. You can turn the stabilization up or down and use keyframes to dial it in. Whereas if you're using something like hyper smooth boost, it just does it all in the camera. You don't have the option to tweak it after the fact. Oh, uh, we're coming up. We're coming at the end of the stream. I got a couple more super chats I need to get rid of. I mean, uh, acknowledge. That's not the best way to word that. Um, Jack Nimble, thank you for five dollars. Keep it up. Okay, I will do, dude. Aminor Threat ninety nine, thank you for a ten dollars super chat. Do you have any idea when the Crossfire Micro TX modules will be available in the U.S.? No worries if you don't know. Um, who could I ask about that? I don't know. Let me, I'll tell you what. I'm going to ask somebody who might know. And if he gets back to me before the end of the stream, I will tell you. I'm asking somebody who might know. If he gets back to me, I'll tell you. But I don't have, an, I don't know. I haven't heard. Um, I, I, I know that production got really screwed up uh, with coronavirus. So. Copter612, thank you for $5. These live streams are greatly appreciated in strange stay-at-home orders. Uh, yeah, it's been kind of weird to me because, like, to I'm just doing my thing, but people are saying, oh, really? I'm, you know, your live stream is helping me stay sane while I'm trapped in my house with my with my family. Uh, and that's kind of weird to think about, but um, I'm glad. I'm glad. I know because here's the thing. I have streamers who I watch. I get off this stream, I go up to make a sandwich, I put a streamer on, and I'm listening to it. And I'm, it never occurs to me that I'm that guy for you. So thank you. Uh, I'm glad. Um, it means a lot to know that, that that's helping. Jeff FPV, thanks for five bucks. Shout out to whoever made the FPV mod for GTA 5. Hell yeah. FPV quadcopter mod for GTA 5 is pretty amazing. You can fly the whole map. Car, and it's a decent simulator too. Carl, thank you for five bucks. Lawrence Martin, thank you for three bucks. There was somebody who asked, hey, I'm in a real bind. Can you check the Super Chats? I think I'm, I don't know which, uh, let's see. Let me keep going. If I, do I need to keep going? Lawrence Martin, three bucks. Mark LeCap, five bucks. Thank you very much. Oh, oh, I see. I see. I, I'm not as far back as I thought I was. Michael Maurer, thank you for five euros from the FPVKA community overseas. Thank you, Michael. Dreams FPV, thank you for two dollars. We got that. Oh, Gravy Leg, Gravy Leg, you don't have Gravy Leg. You don't have to. Thank you for the super chat, dude. You can just call me up, dude. Hey, Joshua, I bought used HDOs. They turn off and reboot the module randomly, even after swapping the board with a barrel connector with a known good one. Did this with Rapid Fire and TBS Fusion. Um, Old Gravy Leg, it's possible. That you need, are you using, did you do the inverter mod? Because both rapid fire and fusion draw more power and should be going into low power mode. Um, I would, if you can try it with a low power, like a, 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 a furious, furious FPV or something, or use the aux power cable for the module and see if that fixes it. Frankly, Gravy Lake, if you use the aux power cable over to the head tracker bay, that may fix it. Just because maybe like your five volt pin is flaky, but just moving the power over to the head tracker bay might might make it work. 
if you are using the aux power cable and it's still cutting off, I think the 5 volt regulator in the goggles is is flaky and you probably need to contact Fat Shark support for a warranty replacement or maybe not warranty depending on how old the goggles are. Day Shaw, thank you for $3 and Martin Hood $5 bravo. Now I'm caught up on the super chats. Thank you for eight dollars, Ammon or Threat ninety nine. I'm happy to ask my Elite Connect about the Crossfire Micro, but I I hope I'm not sure I'll get an answer. It is Easter Sunday, in the middle of the afternoon, so I'm not sure that this guy will answer. But uh, we'll see. Oh, okay. What's the best way to add Bluetooth to your quads to be able to use Speedy B? Asks empty my mag on you. I'll tell you the answer. This is the one that I think most people are going to get the best use out of. Um, this is this one, this one. You connect an XT60 to it, and you plug a lipo in. So, you got to plug a lipo into it, but you got spare lipos, and it plugs into the USB port. So the advantage of this adapter is that you don't have to solder anything permanently to your flight controller, and it works with all your quads. I've seen people use this and, and they seem to like it a lot. There is one that you can solder directly onto your quad and then you don't have to plug anything in. But that to me, that's a little annoying. Empty my mag. I think this is the, the best one. Juldor asks, any idea what causes the artificial horizon to drift over time? Uh, makes GPS rescue more dangerous because it puts the quad in a weird angle when it thinks it's level. Shoulder, I'm very sorry to tell you, Betaflight has a bug it, where the accelerometer drifts over time. When you first power up, horizon is level. And as you fly, it accumulates error that doesn't correct and the horizon drifts. And as you point out, it makes angle mode or GPS rescue useless. Because when you flip to angle mode at the end of a flight, the quad goes, bah! and it can't fly. So, unfortunately, there is no perfect fix for it. I would, There are some suggestions for changing certain parameters in, like, the ACC underscore LPF underscore HZ, ACC low pass hertz. Some people say changing that to one hertz fixes it. Other people say, I tried it, it didn't work. There is no guaranteed fix other than to buy a different flight controller. And basically with every flight, con and I'm not even saying like switch from one flight controller to a different model. Some flight controllers are affected. Other flight controllers of the exact same model are not affected. My, my personal guess is it has something to do with the accelerometer chip itself. I just don't know. But basically if you have a flight controller where you're having AC accelerometer drift, you may not be able to solve it at all other than by replacing your flight controller. I wish there was a better answer. I've searched and searched for one, and there isn't one. If you search Google for accelerometer drift, you can find some GitHub issues where people are talking about this issue, and you can try the solutions that they suggest, but they're not 100%. There isn't 100%. ProZ71 says, there is a temporary fix for in-flight horizon drift. I am all ears, my man. I will hold the live stream until you tell me what it is. I would love to be able to, because a lot of people fly acro. That's why this is, hasn't been fixed more aggressively. People fly acro, and so they kind of don't care about the accelerometer. But it's really dangerous. Number one, if you fly angle mode, it means that as you fly, the quad slowly becomes uncontrollable, but at least you see it coming. But if you have angle mode on a switch as a bailout, it's really dangerous because you'll fly your whole flight on acro and at the end of your pack, when you're about to crash, you switch to angle mode to try to bail out. And instead of leveling out, the quad will go Bwah! and fly in a crazy direction. Pro Z1 full says, yaw full left, then full right. Like, are you just supposed to do that? That'll, but that'll fix it in the moment. But if you're like crashing and you've, you enable GPS rescue, that won't fix it permanently. I mean, that's a, yeah, that's a temporary fix, but not a permanent fix. We're four minutes to the end of the hour. Four minutes to the end of the stream. Siati FPV is in the stream. 
Siadi is going to be streaming on his channel at 3 o'clock. He streams after me. Uh, Siadi, go ahead. Start posting the link to thank you. By the way, Siadi, Siadi is so respectful, too. I mean, Siadi is just a good dude. I would never accuse him of doing it. But I have noticed he always waits for me to cue him before he starts posting the link to his stream. And I don't think that's an accident. And I'm not, I wouldn't be a jerk about it. He knows he's going on after me. He can, but he always waits. It's a good dude, that Siati. That's very thoughtful of you, man. It's a little thing. It wouldn't be a big thing if you didn't do it, but it's nice that you did do it. Shows it's very thoughtful. So go ahead and start posting that link, Siati. Siati's going to be streaming at 3 after I go off the air. I will be streaming again tomorrow at 8 p.m. And Siati will be streaming after me at 10. He's a good dude. My HDO blacks out in the middle of flight, causing me to crash. Uh, Monolith, the, the number one reason that will happen is that the barrel plug is loose. Sorry, it's on this side. The barrel plug is loose and your battery's not making good connection. Try a new battery. The plug itself is usually the issue, not the jack, but it could be the jack. But it's usually the battery is loose. That is the cause for blackout like that. If only he didn't eat on stream so much, though. I'm just teasing him. Is Real Steady only compatible with GoPro? That is correct, Flacky. So, Flacky, Real Steady Go is the new software for $100, and it is only compatible with GoPro because GoPro puts gyro data in their video, and Real Steady. Use, it doesn't do image processing. I mean, maybe it does some, but it uses the GoPro gyro data to stabilize the video in post, but on, it only reads the GoPro gyro data. Um, Real Steady, the After Effects plugin, not Real Steady Go, the After Effects Real Steady plugin uses image processing to stabilize. And it's really good, but there's no substitute for having real-time gyro data to tell you what to do with the with the image. So, it, and in fact, Real City has been acquired by GoPro. You may not have heard that. Uh, this this was announced a few weeks ago. So, Real Steady did such a good job that GoPro bought them. And so, if you're thinking, well, maybe someday Real Steady will work with other cameras, nope. GoPro owns them now. Can you use Real Steady on DJI FPV? Asked David Spawn. David, you can use the old Real Steady After Effects plugin on DJ on any footage, but Real Steady Go, which is the new hundred dollar one, only on a GoPro footage. Well, guys, it is one minute to the hour, and I certainly would not disrespect Siati by going over after he was so polite. Siati, post that link one more time if you want to head on over. If you want to head on over uh, and check uh, two more hours of, of fun streaming, uh, post it once you post that link one more time, I'm going to be out of here. Thank you guys so much for hanging out with me for a couple hours. Happy Easter to those who are celebrating or whatever holiday you're celebrating right now. And uh, I will see you guys again tomorrow at 8 p.m. I should make Nightbot just post Siati streams. <laughs> That's it, guys. That's going to be the end of the stream. Oh, hell, hang on. Dr. Steve Moriale gave a $50 super chat. Sorry, Ciotti, but I got to shout that out. Wouldn't want to miss it. Thank you, Dr. Steve Moriale, for $50. Um, uh, Adventure Ohio 2, thank you for $5. Shit, Ciotti, I'm so sorry, dude. Flywoo Goku F7 and Luminar 4 and 1, both wiring harness. They have telemetry and current. How would you set that up? Uh, um, current sensing, use analog ADC. Telemetry, you could use for RPM and stuff, but I would just not use telemetry. Use analog current. Moutine, 2007, 20 Canadian dollars. Learning something today on my 49th birthday. Uh, having issues with voltage and current reading. Voltage is fine, but then wanders. And in the field, uh, if your current, if your voltage reading is not consistent, you have damaged hardware, I would replace the flight controller if you really need that. Sorry, that's that's the workaround. It should just not, it should not move. Finally, Alan, thank you for $5 on the Tyro 119 build series. What was the reason for downloading the Target Matic F405 STD? It's because the Matic target name changed, Alan, between 357 and 4.1. The Matic, They just changed the name of it, and Matic F405 STD was the correct target as far as I know. Okay, I've gone over CID one minute, but I felt like I had to read the Super Chats. That's gonna, I'll, send a, I'll send CID a Super Chat to make it up to him. I'll see you guys later. Head on over there. Happy, happy Sunday, everybody.